hey everyone welcome back to my channel if you're new here hit that subscription button if you've been with me from the beginning or you recently joined i thank you so much now this is part two the things to do in costa rica and again guys if costa rica is not on your list for somewhere for you to go and travel please put it on the list now i'm gonna do a recap of the things that i spoke about in part one the hot springs that's number one guys go and check out part one right I also spoke about the zip lining in Monte Verde, which is I've never done any zip lining like that ever in my life. So I'm telling you guys, you won't be disappointed. And if you're wondering how this turned out, again, you have to check out part one. I'm gonna be leaving the link in the description below. Third thing on the list was La Fortuna waterfalls in La Fortuna, which was truly majestic. Right? Number three. Is it number three? Yeah. No, sorry, number four. <laughs> Clubbing in San Jose. Listen, clubbing in San Jose for me when we were in Costa Rica was one of the best things that we ever did. And the Jamaican culture in Costa Rica was pleasantly surprised to see it. And majority of the Afro-Latina in Costa Rica are actually descendants of Jamaicans. Not only Costa Rica, but Panama as well. So I, I was happy to see that. Uh, number five was the Manuel Antonio Park, which was kind of like a catamaran or a boat party. That we went to right so those are the five things i spoke about in a little bit more detail in part one so like i said check it out now number six this is truly where part two starts um surfing on the beach in jackal now i must be honest when the group went here i didn't go because i was tired you know to go and do these trips and it's just like it's just one thing after the next after the next plus they woke up extremely early like yeah. 6 30 to go to the, the beach in the morning and um yeah i was in bed i was feeling a bit under the weather but they went they did some video in for me it's a beach where you can go and surf swimming is not allowed but it's still a nice place to go and take pictures and just look at it and so forth so if you're a big surfer then this is the place for you down by jacko right number seven on our list is the atv at la fortuna um again i never got the opportunity to do it to do this but some of the girls went and i know i would have enjoyed it had i had the chance to go it was between this and going to the hot springs and honestly i just wanted to unwind so i went to the hot springs instead but for the most part what the girls told me was that like the atv it was any age because there was a child on the back of one of the atv right so it doesn't matter your age group and they did it going around the volcano i'm not sure if you saw any other clip but that was the volcano but we're gonna you just gonna come up again um while they were along the route there was some horseback riding again so this particular route you can do horseback riding or atv we were at the arena of um volcano park is where they signed up for it it was 110 for the both of them two of them are sharing one bike right so definitely put this on the list it's unique they went on the road and then they kind of went and did the atv as close to the volcano as they possibly can this is the volcano right here guys this is the arena volcano which is in la fortuna costa rica right and right here you can see where the lava was actually coming like you know you can see the demarcation that was made by the lava another thing that they did while they were there was a little tour um this leaf was um what's the word like an opioid um, where it's like a numbing so like they chew on it and it numb the, the, the corners of their mouth and the guy also showed them what they call natural shampoo which is the flower where you squeeze it and you say the goo come out of it and they use it as shampoo these as shampoo sorry these were some natives to costa rica right next on the list number eight now guys if you don't have this as number eight it was by far my least favorite thing to do um, we woke up at 5 a.m. and this is after I went clubbing in San Jose up until 3.30 a.m. You know. Buenos dias. How are you feeling? Get this. Tell them the vlog. Tell them the vlog. How are you feeling? Man ready. <laughs> Well, let me verify they stayed out till 3 30 a.m i actually went home around 12 30 and that's this train they have a train that by, goes by our airbnb so often again guys check out my vlog that i did on the airbnbs because we stayed mostly at airbnbs when we we're at costa rica there weren't really much hotels in costa rica like that per se but because we're going to so many different places um airbnb just worked out better anywho so back to the story for this place that we're going right so we had to wake up at 5 a.m to catch the bus which obviously you can see right here took us to another shuttle bus right and this bus is the one that's taking us to the dock mind you guys these houses here were 
absolutely magnificent i wish i could have driven through that community right but anyways the bus ride to the dock where the boat was was at least an hour or two and this is it i thought it would have been like a catamaran i thought it would have been like a boat but this is more like a ferry right but you know either way we already paid for it this was 130 dollars per person it was the most expensive thing that we paid for um while we were in costa rica they said we're giving us breakfast and this is what they gave us a piece of tomato a piece of sandwich and a biscuit Ugh, guys i just don't i don't recommend it at all and obviously this is the upstairs there's the upstairs and the downstairs right there was a decent amount of people and kids were there as well so you know that it's not only an adults only boat trip um, there was also a DJ on board, which, I mean, wasn't really playing anything all that, you know? But a DJ was present. There was no alcohol on this boat ride in terms of, you pay $130 per person and there's no free alcohol involved. Listen to me. You will never have that in Jamaica, guys. I'm telling you, you won't have that in Jamaica. If you're going on a boat party anywhere the alcohol is included in the fee mm -mm. anyways we got here and this is it now it basically brought us to a beach and i knew that was kind of what it was because you know this is isla tortuga but you know i went to mexico and i just thought it would have been something like isla Mieres, where you know it's a whole other island in that yes there's a beach there but you can walk around the island and there's so many other little stuff around the island to do this wasn't the case if you just look in the corner a while ago you saw the same guy that was playing the <laughs> being the dj was playing the saxophone to welcome us um you know they had the volleyball there the volleyball net so some of the guests that were there they were playing volleyball um but Overall, I don't think this was worth my $130. They did have the canoes and if you wanted to use the canoes or if you wanted to go snorkeling or any other boat activity like that, you know, or water sport activity, that was an additional cost, right? And some of them went snorkeling and they didn't see anything. So, I mean, that was a waste. I mean, it never made much sense. I thought this little kid was cute. He was just in his own little world, playing with his little toys. I thought it was the cutest thing. And Again, there was a lot of reggae dance or music. Fit me now, old man again. Stiff titty now, old man again. Get everybody old. Unfortunately, the dance or music was very short lived, but it was time for lunch. And I will say that <laughs> the buffet was probably one of the best parts of the trip. But again, because we went out the night before and got in in the wee hours of the morning and then our boat, sorry, the bus came for us at 5 a.m. Um, you know, being on the beach, just chillaxing in one of the chairs after I finally found some shade, you know, that was enough for me, right? Again, the DJ, he was well-rounded. He was a DJ on the boat. He played the saxophone. He came back on the beach. He sat up again to do some DJing. I'm pretty sure the beat to this song that he was singing was a very common song, but you know, I don't really know. Maybe there's another song to the beat, but for the most part, it reminded me of a very common song, and they sang me Happy Birthday. <laughs> Remember guys, like, share, subscribe, follow me over on Instagram, go and like these pics. This picture look nice, right? Listen, when I was taking the picture, the sun was hot. I had to sprint <laughs> for that shit. <laughs> oh my god. Anyways, I also have a souvenir um area and you know this is actually where I got a good amount of my souvenirs because I, I was actively looking while I was in San Jose for some particular um souvenirs i usually when i go on vacation i usually get the same things some keychains picture frames because i'm big on print, printing pictures so i usually get some picture frames you know some t-shirt and i always try and get a towel that's in the, f the flag for the country um but yeah so you know this is pretty much that isla torque to offered i don't know if it was because of the time of the year when we it was really vibesy you know like i said it was pretty much a chill day you know i my coke and i was drinking and that was it now we're on to the next one next on the list is the street tour that we did in san jose you guys can see the graffiti on the wall right there so 
Um, San Jose was pretty artistic. San Jose was giving me 10 other countries in one. Um, you know, just from the restaurants and the food and all of the variety that was there. But this street tour was something that JP found. And it was a free street tour, so we never paid any money for it. And we were meeting up with our guide here. His name was David. Um, he was, you know, really good. We walked around the city and he showed us some, I guess, historical places and so forth. Now, well, this is a museum. We never went into the museum, but he showed us the museum. And there was something adjacent to it where there was a ball. Um, I think it had some musical um, inclinations or something. I really couldn't understand what he was saying, but he showed us this ball, which is of some importance, right? Following that, this particular building he brought us, and he was just like, what do we think it does this look like? And I was just like, well, it looks like a prison. There's no windows, but, you know, the front of it kind of looks too good to be a prison. But apparently it's the parliament building. You know, some people raided it way years ago and broke in and entered through the windows. So after that, there was just like no more windows, right? Some other buildings that he showed us was this building, what they call the yellow building. So like in America, they have the White House here in Jamaica of the King's House. So this is the house that the president or the prime minister would have lived in, right? Adjacent to that, there was this particular house. Like the architecture in Costa Rica was so different. This looks like anything out of Harry Potter. Speaking of Harry Potter, they have a huge Harry Potter culture down there. This particular building was made strictly out of containers and this is actually the school like a square right and when you knock on it you hear you know you can hear the metal. uh other buildings you know the architecture like i said was really nice the tall building about that was the um the bank and i don't remember what that gold one was but like overall you know a whole variety is what i would say <laughs> um what's happening now this statue right here of that guy over the corner where the arrow is, that is a statue of their um of their one national hero that they have and there was a story with a battle that took place and I'm gonna let so, you talk. So guys what happened is that in 1856 happened that war. Okay. Why? Because at the time there was no Panama Canal. Uh -huh. So the mercenaries from the US they were looking for a maritime route to join the Atlantic Ocean, the ports in the US, to the new territories that they gained from Mexico in California. So they were looking for a maritime path because there was no Panama Canal. So they were looking for a kind of maritime path and they found between Costa Rica and Nicaragua a river. Okay, so uh, they came here and they conquered firstly Nicaragua and after that they want to conquer us. So we are going to walk around the monument. All right, some other monuments was the I can't remember who this one was. If I'm being honest, this one was pretty much like the Frank Sinatra of Costa Rica, is what he said. And then they had, I believe, this one was um Queen Victoria. Um, you know, guys, I went to Costa Rica in June and I don't remember everything, but I'm pretty sure this was Queen Victoria. They also had a a kissing statue in the park, and apparently. <laughs> I really this is a park where people come to make out yeah um you know that was that was pretty much it that was my understanding of the park um but outside of that there was a lot of different sculptures like this one right here which is the wings right of Mexico and it was really nice you know it's a nice picturesque area my little boy is right there is so cute I took some pics again guys follow me over on Instagram you know um, like the pictures, share them, you know, if you're in somebody's thinking of going to Costa Rica, hope this video was helpful and, you know, send it to them. And this was in the corner. It was a mirror, but it looks good as well. And I think this was a beehive and somebody was playing music. So we saw a variety of the town, a whole lot of different stuff. He even showed us this one particular tree, which is what they used to use to make the, the corks that are in like the wine bottle. It's a sponge tree. So like when you touch it, it's super, super soft. Obviously, you guys can't feel it through the camera, but just imagine for a second. It felt exactly like the corks that are in the wine bottles. He also brought us down to a store where they make chocolate. Uh, it wasn't necessarily a chocolate tour. I think we got there a little too late. Um, but, you know, they kind of told us how it is they would go about making the chocolate and all of that right so you know when you walked in we saw the guy in the back mixing it around in the machine you know so we, we arrived just a little bit too late so we weren't able to catch the full thing
again guys like share subscribe for those who are new here your new subscriber welcome to the family welcome to the adventure family for those who don't know this is cocoa and this is where chocolate comes from okay guys they had a wide variety of different products that they sell and they also had the percentage of the strength of chocolate that was there and you know the lady was kind enough to let us sample some of the chocolate um the raw one as well as some of the beans and i'm just gonna get you guys see my honest complete reaction but please note i'm not a fan of chocolate farts i mean i'm not a fan of chocolate but it tastes like chocolate <laughs> mm -hmm. we say rocas de cacao okay it's the natural beans natural beans okay yes. roasted and dark chocolate color okay mm -hmm. mm. Mm. This one is better. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. This one is better. Can't waste it. Okay, number ten on the list is street food. Definitely, definitely. Y'all know I'm a foodie, so it's street food, something you have to try. We went down to the craft market. Um, this was our tour guide, David, again. He was telling us what to order and what's good on the menu, what's not good, and so forth. And when the lady was taking the order, this is basically her. She was just there, and she just shouted out in the back what the order was. It was, <laughs> was an experience. After placing our orders, they brought out the appetizer. This was planting with, I thought it was scrambled egg, but it was actually cheese. I was very good and this drinks oh amazing they call it the cast juice but it was actually guava this is how the food comes down like listen i haven't seen anything like this only in like one of those old movies so like you know she literally just showed up the order and then afterwards you see the thing come down with the tray with all of the different food that we ordered and everything and um it was it was it was good it was pretty decent you know you know i'm all about trying different cuisine and it's always good to try the local food so this was definitely a local restaurant and what locals eat on a regular you know they're big on rice and peas there they're, so it was kind of like home even the planting because we eat a lot of planting here in jamaica um they said they only had pork left so when they said pork i was thinking pork pork but the pork that they had was more vienna sausage pork which when you look in my plate you'll see so um i wasn't really feeling that because you know i ain't <laughs> travel <laughs> all these miles to come to Costa Rica to eat tin sausage but outside of that the food overall was good Oh, the place where we went and got the food is in the market, guys. That not like a blue dress, anyways. So, the market in San Jose, this was pretty much how we finished up our street tour. And I'm telling you, this marketplace had absolutely everything. They had, you can see, coconut brush. We saw something that looked like blue drawers. I never buy it to see if it was actually blue drawers that was in it. You know, they had this stuff that kind of looked like bummy, but, you know, it wasn't bummy. So, you know, they had raw meat. They had um, flowers. You know, they, we also got some souvenirs in here. And like I said, the restaurant that I just showed you guys was actually in this place as well so we were in downtown san jose right so i mean basically it has a little bit of everything there's even a pet store at one point there were nothing but birds that we were hearing um you know we went and we got some souvenirs and you know there were fruits as well even saw like dragon fruit which was like the first time i've ever seen dragon fruit in like real life <laughs> and all of those little stuff well, we're even down there buying our souvenirs. David showed us what a typical coffee maker looks like in Costa Rica. Well, I guess one of the olden ones, which was pretty example, unique. This is a coffee maker of Costa Rica, okay? But this is as well a kind of uh, structure that you can hang on the, on the wall, okay? And you can surprise your relatives or friends. Why not at your home 
and you can have it hanging on the wall and they are going to say oh you were visiting Costa Rica nice souvenir for hanging on the wall and you could bet with them bet what this is for okay what I can do with this and they never we are going to they, they are going to, to, to guess so you take this and you just put this in one one table okay and this this cloth, this is not socks, this is, a, <laughs> this is a cloth, you know, and you put the coffee powder here, the glass here, boiling water, and the substance you are going to get here inside. Okay, this is a kind of souvenir. Stay tuned, we're almost done with the vlog. Um, again, guys, like, share, comment, subscribe. If you've made it this far, I thank you. You're the true MVP, All right? Thank you for the support. Again, put Costa Rica on your bucket list. And this pretty much concludes part two of the Costa Rica vlog. The last thing that I'm going to say is that in Costa Rica, especially in San Jose, you definitely have to go to the different restaurants that were there. That, you know, when we were at Costa Rica, we did mostly Airbnbs. So, you know, that meant that we went out to eat a lot. And so much so that I'm doing a whole separate vlog on just the food in Costa Rica. Well, as best as I can, right? So, again, guys, like, share, comment, subscribe. Turn on post notifications so you don't miss when I drop the last video on Costa Rica, which will be the restaurants, all right? Again, guys, thank you so much.